Hey, what's up, everybody? I hope you guys are doing good today. Um, I just wanted to talk to you guys about what's going on in the world. Specifically, I'm in the United States, so it's you know it's 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 heavy here. Um, the big topic, what's happening right now in the country, um, is the coronavirus, um, COVID nineteen, the virus that's going on um, all around the world. Things are changing for people's lives, their jobs, their health, their lives, family members. Um, it, it, it's, it's bad. It's bad. I think um, it's you know obvious that it's bad, right? So let's talk about it because I think um, we need to get a biblical uh, perspective about what's going on, okay? If you're new here, my name is Nick Acosta. Um, this is a channel where you can grow with me um, in Christ, grow with me in your walk with God grow with me in biblical truth and the truth of the gospel, the new covenant, who we are in Christ and what Christ has called us to do. Okay. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and talk about it guys. So the, the, the coronavirus, um, a lot of people, um, in, in the body of Christ, you know, have, have, have had their mixed emotions and feelings about it. You know, cl churches are closing down. So automatically we're like, you know, it's the devil. <laughs> you know, if the, if the church is closing down, it can be from God, right? Um, some people are saying it's from God, it's judgment because all this sin and all this evil going on, uh, which we, we see that in the Bible. Um, but I mean, we know that the ultimate judgment, ultimate condemnation and wrath of God is going to be poured out <clears throat> when Jesus returns and the judgment is made as far as, um, people, people who are going to be entering his kingdom, people who are not. So we can talk about that as well. Cause I, I think it all plays um, a factor in this situation. So, so what do you guys think? I want you guys to, um, comment, comment below. Um, let me know what you think about the coronavirus. Uh, what's your perspective on it? Is a is it a God thing? Is it a biblical thing? Is it a devil thing? Um, is it something we can't change? God can't change. The devil has nothing to do. What, what, what's your perspective? What's your opinion about it? <clears throat> so what I think is that number one, a lot of Christians. Um, I think obviously a lot of Christians have been um, walking in fear. I think that's something we can clearly see um you know we're not pointing any fingers we're not <clears throat> trying to bring anybody down um we know that people are in different stages of of their faith in god and of their understanding of the new covenant of what real christianity is all about um and so we see that we know uh, people are dying uh, we know there's there's christians who have died um i believe i've i've heard a couple stories and seen a couple articles about a pastor or two um passing away so we know that's going on um what else um it's 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 um uh, it's growing, right? More and more cases, more and more deaths. Um, in some countries, it's clearing up a little bit. They say um, that people are going out now and stuff like that. I believe in China, but um, I, I think it's is 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 necessary to talk about God <laughs> when it comes to the coronavirus because a lot of believers and, and when it first started, you know, including me, and, and I'm still praying about it. But a lot of believers just saw what was going on and quickly, immediately went into prayer mode. Like, okay, you know, the enemy is killing people. The enemy is attacking people. Let's pray for God's healing. Let's pray for God's power. Let's pray for God's mercy. And we've prayed and we've prayed and we've prayed. And it's been over a month, right? And it doesn't seem to be changing. It, it, it doesn't seem like like God did something about it. Um, so it's God just turned away you know, just blinding himself, not looking at what's going on or, 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 or what's happening here. Well, if we read the Bible, we read the scriptures, we know that um, God is a healer. We know that God healed in the New, in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. We know that God never changes. He's the same from Genesis. He's the same all the way to Revelation, right? So, so we understand that if we read the word. I, ho I hope you read the word. I hope you're reading the scriptures before you make opinions, before you, um, you know, try to find solutions and answers to questions. I hope you're reading the Bible because that's where they come from. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so we see that, right? We see God being a healer. Um, what else do we see in the Bible? We see a sinful world, right? We see a fallen world. We see fallen people who are disobedient, who are evil, who are rebellious and who live against God's ways. Clearly, back then and now, right? Old covenant, new covenant. Genesis, 
no covenant, and in revelation in, in his return and when he judges everybody. It's, it's going to be sinful people until, you know, um, new heaven and new earth take place, which is his plan, his awesome plan. I'm excited about that. Um, so we see the sinfulness of, of people, the rebellion of people, the disobedience towards God of people, right? Um, and we see God being a healer. What else do we see? We see wrath coming upon the sons of disobedience, right? We see those scriptures. We see the scriptures about um, the wrath of God or people bringing God's wrath upon themselves. Um, we see that. Um, we see that Jesus came, right, to not condemn the world because the world is already condemned. Let me say that again. The world is already condemned. Everybody is already condemned. And the only way to get uncondemned, or in other words, justified, is to turn to God, is to believe in Jesus Christ, is to receive his sacrifice, receive the forgiveness of your sins, and you will be born again, be filled with the Spirit of God, and now you will have a new mission and purpose, which is to live by the spirit according to God's word, continue in the faith. And one day when Jesus returns, we will be with him forever. Okay. So that's powerful. That's the good news. That's the gospel. Praise God for that. Thank you, Jesus, for the cross, his blood, his flesh, right? However, in the new Testament, after Jesus came, I got like a little beard hair right here. I don't know what's going on. Let me see. Man, it's everywhere. Okay, so <laughs> so we, we see in the New Testament after Jesus crucified was crucified and was resurrected, right? Resurrected himself, right? <laughs> after he took his, he, he said, he prophesied, I'm going to lay my life down. And guess what else he prophesied? I'm going to pick it right back up. So we know it was Jesus and the Bible says it was God. And so, and Jesus said, you've seen me, you've seen the, we know Jesus is God. That's part of the gospel. You have to believe that, <laughs> you know, you have to believe that God died for you, that God sacrificed himself for you. God became flesh. Amen. So we see that Jesus, when, after he died, after he was resurrected, guys, we see the church, we see the book of Acts, Christians were getting killed by the power of the Holy Spirit, for lying to the Holy Spirit. We see that it's like, whoa, I thought we were under grace now, new covenant now. Yes, we are, but God never changes. And the Bible says that God has done some things to make examples, to show people around what's going on, how he doesn't like something. And he does like to bring the fear of the Lord upon his people so that they know to get right. If we look all the way back in the Old Testament in the days of Moses after God brought Israel out of Egypt, he parted the Red Sea. We see how they started making idols. We see how, you know, people were getting punished, people were getting judged. The wrath of God came, right? Snakes started biting people and they started getting sick and dying, right? And then there was mercy, and then they had to look up at, at the bronze serpent uh, to be healed or to be saved, which was an image of Jesus, of, of us needing to look at Jesus to be saved, to be healed, right? From, from, from the curse of the law, from sin, the power of sin, the power of the enemy, right? So we see that God in the book of Acts did that, right? Somebody was blinded, somebody was, a couple was killed. Um, we see in the Old Testament that the ground opened up and swallowed up people because of their rebellion, their disobedience, right? Their lack of faith, their murmuring, right? So we see the personality of God and the Bible says that God never changes. The covenant changed, but God never changed, right? And the Bible says in the New Testament that God, right? He, he brings discipline. It says he disciplines, he corrects, right? He corrects his children. It says that he disciplines those that he loves. If us, just mere earthly, natural fathers and mothers, we correct our children because we know sometimes they have a, they have to get a little pop, pop to learn their lesson. Like, oh, dad is serious about that. Dad really doesn't want me to eat all the cake or whatever, right? <laughs> to go outside without a parent watching me, right? If we know the common sense and wisdom of 
your child's not always going to listen to you just by you telling them what to do and not to do. Sometimes he's going to have to feel your muscle. He's going to have to feel that strength, right? God is, is, is even wiser than that. And the Bible says that he disciplines those that he loves. So sometimes we have to realize that, hey, you know, if, if you're in the body of Christ um, and you're going through some sickness, you're going through some disease, you're going through some things um, that, that are not supposed to happen to you through the new covenant, right? We know persecution is supposed to happen. We know people hating you because of the gospel, because of the name of Jesus is supposed to happen. Um, we know people, um, you know, talking bad about you and making things up against you and arresting you and killing you because of Jesus, because of righteousness sake. We know that's supposed to happen. So I'm not talking about that. Okay. I am talking about things that Jesus has delivered us from, right? It says that he redeemed us from the curse of the law, right? It says that we have been healed by his stripes. So there's certain things that 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 God may use. I'm not saying it's always God using these things, right? Um to correct, to discipline and to get kind of get the attention of his children and tell them, "Hey, you haven't been living for me." You've, you've been living for your sin, for yourself. You have to start denying yourself. You have to leave that sin and obey me. I've called you to obey me. I've given you my spirit so you can obey me. Like, what's the problem? What's going on, right? I've given you pastors and, 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 and teachers and, and prophets and evangelists to teach you, to train you, to equip you. So you can actually do ministry for me and live for me and, and make disciples and be witnesses. And here you are still just living for your, for your porn and living for your adultery, for your fornication, for your divorce, still living for your partying, for your getting drunk, still living for your vanity, for your muscles, right? For love of self, right? Still living for your love of money, your career, right? The love of things, you self, 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 self. So what happens to the sons of disobedience? The Bible says that the wrath comes upon the sons of disobedience. The Bible says that God corrects those he loves, right? The Bible says that people bring wrath, the wrath of God upon themselves through their wicked acts. So sometimes that's the case. But what's the case when it happens to the whole world like it is happening right now? And it's like, you know, Christians are getting sick. Unbelievers are getting sick. Um, what I would say is some Christians are being disciplined. Some Christians are walking in fear, don't understand the covenant they're in, don't understand and don't believe no evil shall befall me, no plague shall come near our dwelling. By his stripes I've been healed, I'm redeemed from the curse of the law. We read the curses of the law, Deuteronomy 27, 28, 29, and includes sickness and disease and plagues, right? Some Christians don't understand that, so they're walking in fear, even though they're, they might be living right like job was they're walking in fear like job was and maybe some things are being attracted by their fear such as sicknesses and diseases that's just my perspective you could comment below you could you know write something on the comments and let me know if you agree with that disagree with that um and then we could maybe go back and forth uh with, with scriptures and, and and see if that helps you or that helps me okay so that might be the case somebody believers walking in ignorance or in fear Walking in disobedience, getting getting corrected, or non Christians who are already condemned, who are already cursed, right? Who don't have covenant with God are getting sick, like sickness happens because of sin, right? So that's that's not surprising, right? Uh, the fact that there's cancer, the fact that there's AIDS, that there's HIV, the fact that there's all these diseases that happen um, to all these people outside of covenant with God who are enemies of God, the Bible calls it sinners, right? Against God. The fact that that's happening, that's not surprising, right? So we have to remember, let, 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 let's sober down and let's remember the wages of sin is death. Sickness came when sin came. Amen. So let's remember, if it's something going on in the body of Christ, then think about the scriptures I just gave you in, in, in the comparisons and the fact that God never changed, the fact that there were people, if you read 1 Corinthians, there were people taking the Lord's Supper, going there to get to get full and eat and skip line, not wait for people to take the Lord's Supper and getting drunk. And, and Paul was like, this is unrighteous. There's people going to take the Lord's Supper with the body of Christ at the church and doing it unrighteously. And for this same reason, they're bringing wrath upon themselves. Some of them are getting sick and some of them are even dying. So this is New Testament. People were dying because of their, 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 their wickedness. New Testament. 
A couple got killed because they lied to the apostle Peter. <laughs> you know, <laughs> a sorcerer, blinded, right? Saul, blinded, right? And then and God used that to, to, you know, to put the fear of the Lord in them, get them straight, right? Sit, to sit them down. Right. So so that's my perspective with the body of Christ. If, if, if it's happened to somebody that's a Christian, that's my perspective. If it's happening to somebody who's outside of covenant with God, then, you know, that's what sin does. What can we do as believers for them? Well, we've been praying and praying and God's, God hasn't removed it. So it could be it, it could be the wrath of God. It could be the consequences of their sinfulness, of their rebellion. They keep rejecting God. They keep rejecting the message of Jesus Christ. What can we do? I mean, we, we, we can ask for mercy. Moses asked for mercy. Jesus asked for mercy. Abraham asked for mercy for their enemies, right? For the unrighteous, for the wicked, for those that God was ready to judge 100%. Sometimes God, you know, listened to the men of God. Sometimes he was like, nah, I'm, 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 I'm set on doing this. So praying is good. I've interceded a lot for the whole world, not just believers, the whole world. But if God's not removing that hand of judgment, if God's not removing that, then what can we do but say, Lord, you know what you're doing. Have your way. Because I know there's people who are, you know, completely, uh, you know, in wickedness, in sinfulness, and in, in rejecting the message of Jesus. And maybe God knows that, hey, they weren't never going to believe. Maybe God knows that he's given them chance after chance after chance. And he's been patient with them time after time. Maybe God knows what, what, what stuff they were in. We don't know. Right? So what can we do? Just trust God. Still keep praying for his mercy. What if we see somebody that says they're sick? Well, Jesus told us to do what he did. Jesus told us to go about healing the sick, all those who are oppressed, right, by the devil, right? He said, lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So maybe we can lay hands on the sick and, 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 and bring the mercy of God to them and tell them, just like Jesus told people, hey, <laughs> stop living your lifestyle of sin and turn to God before something worse comes upon you. There's a reason why Jesus said that, because their sin brought sickness. Come on now. You can tell them, hey. Now that you're healed, now that the Lord healed you through me, through my laying on of hands, because Jesus gave me authority to do it, believe in Jesus so you can have eternal life, but believe in Jesus so that something uh, worse doesn't come upon you through your sin, right? Leave your sin behind, deny yourself, follow Jesus so we can do that. Now you might ask yourself, oh, you just quoted a scripture that said um, Jesus was healing people who were oppressed by the devil. So that means sickness is from the devil. No, no, no. Sin is from the devil and sickness comes from sin, disobedience to God. The wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience who are blinded by the devil, who were deceived by the devil. Sinfulness came in because of the devil. So, yeah, he's the originator of it, but he's not the one saying sickness here, sickness. That. He had to ask God for permission. And remember the story of Job? All from Old Testament to New Testament, God is using plagues, sicknesses, and diseases as judgment, as wrath. So what can we do? We could bring the gospel to the people. And if you still want to pray mercy, you could keep praying mercy. But I believe, I strongly believe that this is the Lord's doing, that he's bringing his wrath, that he's letting people know, hey, get serious with me. Uh, he wants people to get full of the fear of the Lord. He wants people to take God seriously and remember that he is the same God who was around in the days of Moses and he, the same God who was around with Sodom and Gomorrah, the same God who was around, right, when when when, when um, Ananias and, and Sapphira got killed, right? He was the same God that was around when, 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 or the same God who's going to be around in, in, in the book, in the times of the book of Revelation, where, where God says, hey, I'm going to judge you according to your works. And you, you, you brought these things upon yourself. You asked for this. I gave you a uh, chance after chance after chance. I knocked on the door. You didn't open it. So here is your meal. You, you, you asked for this meal. You laid your bed. Amen. So we got to remember, guys, that God is the same God today as he was back then. So stop calling something that may be God as the devil and stop you, some of us need, need to stop praying and we need to start, start using wisdom and, and maybe start getting our lives together because there's Christians praying for the people with the coronavirus who, who haven't, you know, got serious with the Lord and really started living for the Lord and denying themselves and putting away their sins and all those things that they keep putting before their obedience to God. 
You know, if you're an unbeliever, hey, you don't know if you're going to get the virus right now and die tomorrow. So I suggest you turn to God, you turn to Jesus, you, you, you tell him, hey, I'm sorry I've sinned against you. I believe you're our creator and I believe that you sent your son, yourself as a human to die for me to bring the forgiveness of my sins so I can have eternal life. I suggest you turn to God. I, su I suggest you believe in Jesus and leave your sins so that you can be forgiven of your sins. Because I'm telling you right now, man, the people who are who have who have hardened hearts, who don't fear God, if they die because of this coronavirus, God's gonna judge them for their works. And there is condemnation for them. There's a lake of fire, there's hell, hell is real. If they take this opportunity and start to fear God and turn to Him. God will forgive them and cleanse them from their sins and unrighteousness and, 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 and give them their, his spirit and give them eternal life. So that's just my take on it. I want you guys to share this video. Um, if you believe this is this is something biblical and beneficial um, and, 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 and give me, leave me a comment. Do you agree with this? Disagree with this? We got to remember, guys, that that um, the devil was the deceiver, the liar. Right. But God was the one who was always in charge who gave the orders and commands and when people didn't obey them and when enough time of disobedience went by he kind of threw something out there did something about it to get the people to take him serious again to get the people's attention to teach people lessons to make examples out of people it's, i know it sounds heartless but that's god we've been heartless for thousands of years jesus came to over two thousand years ago look at us we, we're the ones that seem hardest against him. And the Bible says that he's patient because he wants all to be saved and all to repent and all to come to the knowledge of Christ. He wants all of us to receive eternal life. So he's been way more than patient. If you lived more than like three years old, he's been patient with you. Because I know by the, the time you turn three, you sin like crazy. You lied, you stole, you were envious and jealous. You wanted this baby's toy and you wanted your food when you wanted it. And you disobeyed and dishonored your parents by the time you were three. So if you're older than three, God's been patient with you and merciful. So, you you know, we can't say God's not merciful because there's people dying from the coronavirus. Come on. The wages of sin is death. Amen. Let's grow. Leave your comment. Tell me what you think about this. And I'm going to make a, a, another video expanding and elaborating on some more ideas and more scriptures. Because what I shared with you was the personality of God and how God and the, the things we see God doing and how we see him acting in the Old and New Testament. Okay. If, 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 if you want to look up. If you want to look up some scriptures, you know, look at the scriptures that talk about the wrath of God, right? Look up some scriptures, look up some scriptures that, that talk about um, the sons of disobedience. Okay, look at some scriptures that talk about um, uh, even acts when, when they lied to, 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 to the Holy Spirit. And Ananias and Sapphira lied to the Holy Spirit. And Peter said, Satan has filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit, you know? We know at other times, you know, God wasn't just killing people left and right. There was another time when Peter was like, when, when, when somebody, when somebody wanted to pay for the gift of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And Peter was like, man, you're wicked, man. You better pray to God that he has mercy on you. and He may grant you repentance before it's too late. So Peter actually gave him a chance and, and Peter was led by the spirit. And um, so I believe that sometimes God is is sending his wrath and, and, and punishing before Jesus comes to judge every single one of us because we're all going to get judged. Um, and sometimes God is, 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 you know, he leans back. But I think this specific time, the coronavirus time, this season right now is a time where God is just sick of it and getting people's attentions and we got to turn to him. OK. That's, I mean, if you don't agree with it, you don't agree with the Bible. Old Testament to Revelation, that's what God's been doing. I'm not saying that he's going to do it every day, every week, every month. But sometimes if we see things like that and we've prayed against it and we ask God for mercy and it still happens, what can we do? Just like Jesus said, Father, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Not my will, but yours. John the Baptist said, less of me, more of you, Christ. Right? So, we got, our job is to make a way for what the Lord wants to do. If the Lord wants to bring his wrath, his judgment, his warning, make examples, give others the fear of the Lord, who are we to try to go against him? We can ask him for mercy like his people did, Moses, Abraham, Jesus, right? But what if he's saying no? What if he's not listening to us? What if he's still letting this thing take place? We got to look around, see what God's doing, and just... Go with him because we're called to follow him. Amen. 
Bless you guys. Take care. I'll see you next time.